Okay, so I'm gonna do something to these speakers. I've been wanting to get these things done. These aren't terrible, but uh, they do have, you can see some pretty good tears in them. Essentially these pieces of foam, the foam surrounds are completely getting uh, disintegrated. Now I know some people's are completely shredding and you know, gone. These are actually not terrible, but I mean, they're basically, I can tell from the sound, they definitely don't have their, the same punch that they used to. So uh, it's not gonna hurt uh, to change these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I have a, a kit that I bought off of eBay and uh, the kit contains two um, 12 inch rubber. These are 12 inch uh, subwoofers or uh, speakers from uh, Servo Vega. This is out of the VS120 um, speakers. And uh, my um, utility knife and just put the blade down inside and pry up. Since this doesn't take a lot of room, this is a good tool for the job. And if you listen carefully, you'll see or you'll hear the adhesive start to just give up. You hear that? I mean, you can see it, but, and this is like, I'm not doing much at all to get this off. I mean, if you pulled up, the whole thing would just pop up. It's that easy. So you can see that pretty simple. So that's pretty cool. The color is identical to the original color. Isn't that cool? So if you were wondering, you know, like, oh, is it gonna be different? No, that's the same color. So that's really cool. I think the best thing to do would be to just actually tear it. Uh, and when you tear it, the um, rubber yeah, should just do that. And it's gonna open up and give you kind of something to grab onto here. So you can take your utility knife and just kind of go around and cut this thing out. So that's fairly straightforward. Yeah, so that works pretty well. The other option would be to go ahead and scrape at the same time this part off of the flat area here. So it's got to come off at a, 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 any point, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my knife and carefully do this. Let's see, you can also come in from the top. Make sure that you don't go into the cone when you're doing this. Now we've got it off of there. Uh, now we need to get it off the actual cone without damaging the cone. So that's going to be a little bit of a trick. And that's something I'm not going to uh, mess around with. going to get the bulk of it. Okay, so that's there. Done. Now this is obviously going to be the hard part to get off, but um, if you take the um, isopropyl alcohol and just kind of dab it on there, I think that's going to help loosen up this so I can then just kind of peel it off.
Okay. Well, I don't know how long that took, but it was kind of painful. Uh, okay, so we got that started. Now the next step is to uh, clean up the whole thing, and that's to take off the um, any residue that's left over and the foam that's left over, a little bit of foam. So when you do that, you, it will be ready to put the new glue on. Um, so that part is probably going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to try to dissolve this stuff uh, with the isopropyl alcohol. Just kind of put it on and let it kind of work its magic on this stuff. But I think also we can scrape that pretty good. Um, now, I was using a... Uh, um, there's a lip on this speaker, by the way. Right on this edge here. Right there. There's actually a lip. So you can see how my tool doesn't go off. So that lip is... Uh, Nice, but we definitely want to make sure that we clean off all the stuff that's in this area here, this flat spot. And so I was saying that um, since I'm using a screwdriver, uh, I could definitely use like a chisel, something that has a little bit more bite, but this... All this uh, friction with the uh, alcohol. These shotguns are great, but they do. It looks like the shred if you do this. Okay, as you can see. This is a chisel that I use for jobs on the job site. You know, going into the wall, I can pry with this and uh, reach in and grab stuff with. So this is. I'm not concerned about damaging this at all because I'm going to resharpen it anyways. Um, it's just a beater chisel as I call them. So I'm going to put my hand far away and just kind of work this. There's also a pretty decent, you can see that that's glue. Uh, and that's from the, um, the um, gasket. That was the first part that I took off. It's pretty hard, obviously, but that's great for this. It's almost like cutting uh, wood glue. So you can use the chisel tilted like this where the bevel's down or you can put it up. I'm going to put the bevel up and see how that works. Just kind of push it until you get a good um, angle. And you know when you have a good angle is when it'll just start peeling it up like, you know, wood shavings, you know, like that. That's all we want. Now we can take the... When you hit the holes, of course, you got to kind of stop and then get another. This is definitely the, the tool to use for this type of job. You'd never be able to do this with those screwdrivers. But again, I keep my hands behind the tool because I don't want to slip and hit that. I'm just going to go right on into the foam and I'm noticing that it's this is a great tool for this job. You can see, so it's taken up the foam. So I'm just going to continue with this with the glue and the the extra foam there. Okay, I got this all cleaned up. I don't know what the camera just shuts off when it wants to. Uh, I'm a little annoyed by that. Anyways, um, so I'm recording. And clearly, it missed a lot. So basically what I was doing is I was just shaving it off with this quarter inch chisel and just taking it and doing this and just kind of getting these fine shavings of old glue and, you know, crud, basically.
right? So that's what it ended up being. That's the best way to do it. Just take that off and you just barely are taking off any paper. I mean, nothing. So you can see there's a line, but it's not a lip. So that's awesome. Definitely the way to go. I just need to take a little bit of a break. My hands are actually kind of tired. Okay, I'm gonna try something a little different this time. I'm actually going to use my um, chisel to get this off. I'm actually going to put my better glasses on for this kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, feed this right into the foam and see here. Get a spot where I can start it. So rather than taking this foam off like I did before, I'm just going to try to hit this. pretty tough. Not as tough as my chisel though. So this foam, as you can see, is not as disintegrated as some. Now I'm going to attempt to peel away the, um, the foam from the actual speaker and do it without hurting the paper. So I just need to kind of get one. Yeah, there we go. So basically just one little grip on it and see if I can just peel it ever so slightly back. So you can see it's just working itself. And there is no lip here, just, it's just, it's a mild amount of paper that's coming off. It's so minimal. These speakers are in great working conditions, just the foam's nasty. All right, so there's your foam. Look at that, it's almost off in one continuous. That's awesome. So that's definitely better than the other way. This thing's ready to go. Just a little bit of final cleaning with the um, alcohol. And what I will do though is just take my uh, chisel and uh, go inside here and just put it s square to that lip. And just kind of scrape all that, that's all I want to get off there. It's just that leftover glue. It's just kind of in this corner the last way, I think. I just kind of went to the way that I felt like was the best out of the different ways I just did it. So I think this uh, right from the start was faster and achieving the same results, but doing it faster with a lot less effort. So 
So this is just a little bit of residual foam I'm just taking off. That's all this is. It's hardly even needs to be done, I can tell you. But, and it's great for getting into things like this where you need a, a really sharp tool, but also you, it's really skinny. It's got a lot of strength though. So that's really cool. All right, this thing's really good. So now I could just take my isopropyl alcohol and once I dump this out, some isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna wipe the speaker where it's gonna meet the foam and also the, the frame where it meets the foam. So basically all this stuff that's gonna to be touching the foam where I put glue, I'm putting isopropyl alcohol. Got this, this is it. So we can put, put this on here and just kind of see, make sure that that's gonna fit where it needs to fit. And again, I'm looking at the holes so I can see it's covering halfway up, each of them. Now, I also want to look on the actual woofer itself, since I have that line essentially where that previous one went. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I've got this thing all cleaned up. Isopropyl alcohol went on it and cleaned it all up so it's nice and clean. And now I'm touching it, but it's okay. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Okay, so I'll flip this upside down. Now, I think the directions call for you to take this stuff, and this is the glue that comes with it. It's rubber glue, I guess. Um, it does smell like it's got a, a bit of a kick to it, so you might need to be in a ventilated space. Um, so I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to work it around the... Um, the whole inside part where it meets the speaker. This is where the um, turntable, like Lazy Susan, would be good. just to kind of keep it going without using much force. Okay, now I'm just gonna go back around and make sure there's no spots that don't have any glue. And make sure they all, there's a continuous bead. It's not a huge bead, but it's a, Certainly an acceptable bead. And so now I'm just going to come above it and I've got my marks on the speaker so I kind of know you know, approximately where it needs to be.
So it'll be interesting to see how this compares to the original sound wise. You know, if it has any more qualities to it sound wise. Uh, it's been a long time since I've heard it without this foam doing this kind of stuff. So I don't know if I'll even remember. It's good for right now, certainly. Looks pretty good. And work on the other one. So this time I'm just going to do a little bit bigger bead and I'm not going to um, spread it out. This stuff is really nasty. This is not like the water-based stuff. This actually feels more like rubber cement, like it's, it's pretty nasty stuff. Okay, so I'm just putting it on basically so I can see the, um, covering up half of the screw holes, the mounting screw holes, and then I can see my shadow on the, the actual cone and I can get it pretty well placed just by looking at the line from the previous foam. Now these speakers sounded really great before I did this. Although they were considered like the frat house party speaker, they're actually really good quality. It's really good. Um, they blow fuses rather than blow the actual speakers. So people could use these things and just hammer them and they wouldn't break. Case in point, these things with like no foam on them are still shaking walls. It's pretty impressive. I'm gonna look real fast to see if I have any anything lifting up on these speakers. I want to make sure these are completely tight and there's no gaps, no uh, spots lifting up. Those look good. I think that looks good. Keep working this. This is not that water base glue that kind of spreads out like Elmer's glue. This, that's not what this is. I don't know which one's better. All I know is that's what this kit came with. So um, I know for a fact that this is like rubber cement. It smells like it. The texture is like it. So I'm going to go out and say it's rubber cement. All right, so we've gotten to the point where I'm going to start getting the um, foam glued onto the basket here, the frame. So I'm just going to take the glue and apply it right underneath Go around this way.
Judging by last time, I've learned this stuff starts to set up a little faster than I would have thought. So I'm putting a pretty decent bead on this, about an eighth of an inch bead. I can shut this glue up and just start gently pushing it down. So this is sitting pretty nice just as it sits right there. Um, but as it starts to tack up, I'm going to locate it and make sure that it's in the right spot all the way around and check the movement of the speaker make sure that it's not grinding and you can hear it when it grinds it basically makes a really nasty sound so you know if it's doing that it needs to be shifted right pretty common sense. Just about exactly where it was before. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and get the other one. Put this on and use this to hold it down. Flip it over and let the weight of it work for me because it'll press down that part as it holds this and then it should secure nice so I'm just gonna clean this off I'm just gonna try scraping it with my razor blade Okay, so now I'm ready to put the bead of glue on this and rather than putting it on the speaker, I'm just going to put it directly onto this, right in this middle bead. Okay, so now I just put some on the outside as well. There was glue on the outside. So now I'm going to set this down very carefully and align the holes just how it was originally okay that looks really good you can see that so now what I'm going to do is flip it over very carefully hopefully and set it on its face. So I just remembered something that I don't have to do this summer, and that is make 40 cheer boxes or 44 cheer boxes. Um, that's a nightmare. I don't want to have to relive that. So I kind of forgot about that, and then I realized, no, we're not doing those this year. So that's cool. Put a liberal amount on again. Okay, 
So basically this black parts is proud of the the foam. So yeah, it should be all right. That's what we want. Should be able to look through there and see through. At the light down there just to make sure that the holes are aligned. Got these things all done. Look real nice. There's no noise. And look at how nice those things are. That is sweet. So, I need to put it up in my cabinet. Now, in this particular shop, the cabinet is <laughs> all the way up there. So, in order to do that, I'm going to have to put the uh, camera all the way up. So you can see that's 10 feet high. Clearly, I can't reach that without a ladder. So let me grab a ladder and we'll get back. All right, so this is it. So when I put it up here, those cabinets I have in the shop, you'll notice that I've got them bungee corded uh, so that if you ever, you know, there's an earthquake or whatever, they're not gonna fall. Um, when I got these used uh, years ago, the uh, I knew these foams were already going bad, but um, I got such a great deal on them. I had some little bit of damage on the base. I could care less about that. But everything else is really good. And of course, if anything needed to be redone, I could just do it myself. <clears throat> but um, the other cabinet, the um, ports are broken off the glue. So uh, the ports are good here. The only thing is the um, crossover is in there. And honestly, that might need to be changed uh, one of these days. So I'll see how they sound. Um, you know, it might be fine, but that's something that could be probably changed. Um, also, one nice thing to note is that um, the wires, instead of being the exact same, actually have a black line on them, which is really neat. So this goes to the black lead, the negative, and this one without the black goes to the positive. And Thank you, Sir and Vega. They actually put a red dot on the positive, so I know which one positive is. They're not typical screws. Look at these things. So these are really nice looking. Hex drive. So I've got my adapter on the uh, screw gun here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive them in. But first things first, when I put it up here, I only have two hands. I want to make sure that the Sir and Vega is oriented in the right direction. It's like that. Now, because I'm 10 feet up, it's a little precarious. But another nice thing about the Sir and Vegas is that they have a, a recess. They have a rabbit on the the perimeter so that the speaker actually sets into a, a recess. You can see that lip. So that's really cool. Uh, it makes it look really professional when it's like that. All right, so now all I have to do is find the hole. I've already got my, now I'm gonna go up here to the top. Go ahead and do that. And then I will do this the very bottom one right here just to take that pressure off of that top one. One thing also to note, there is no 
seal on this. There wasn't originally, so I didn't do any kind of seal. And there's no T-nuts. This is just going into particle board, um, which is a little bit strange. I would think they would have had T-nuts, but that's fine. T-nuts sometimes come off, so maybe it's better. Because if you lose a T-nut, you got to put them back on. And they're a real pain to get the speakers out if you can't thread the T-nut. So you got to... Uh, just deal with it, I guess. So these seem to be holding really well. And I will notice that it didn't take much effort at all to get the screws out. So they didn't over tighten. Them. Which could be why they're holding well. That's it, done. And those, it just looks really clean. Here, I'll show you a close up. Oh, oh yeah, nice. That looks really good. These are just classy looking speakers. Isn't that nice that is that this logo right there? Just really clean looking. I love it. Okay, so you can see inside there, and this port. So this is about 10 inches long, and I'm guessing that's about four inches in diameter. And there's two of them. Actually, I'm gonna measure this because some people might want to know what these things are. So, outside diameter, four and a quarter. The inside diameter is four inches exactly. So, four inch inside diameter, four and a quarter outside, and it is 10 inches long exactly. So, if anybody out there wanted to know uh, what size these are, now we know. Now, uh, you can see inside here, maybe you can't, but there's a, um, there's a cutout for the port, and it's got a rabbit also. It's got a recess, which is really cool. Uh, I can put the, the port right in there, and it just kind of fits in. Just like so. Um, so that's nice if it's snug. It's very nice in there. We got the old glue. But the old glue is really kind of sitting on the outside, so that's cool. Um, but I need to put new glue in there. And it looks like, I mean, they doused it with uh, what looks like hot glue. Uh, but maybe it wasn't hot glue. I'm not sure. It's really hard to tell what kind of glue that is. Um, I have some construction adhesive. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to put a nice bead around the outside of the uh, port. Um, so I'm going to use this stuff here. But on a, on a um, caulking gun, there's a uh, a hole right here. And you can put your tip in and it cuts it for you. So this is a pretty big uh, thing. But now it still won't work because there's a tin foil sealing it up. So now what you can do is take your poker that's on the bottom of your caulking gun and put it in there. And so now you've got a hole in your uh, tube there. But 
Sometimes you get air bubbles in the tube. Away. All right, so that's got a pretty good uh, bead on it. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually going to take my finger and just kind of smooth it out and press it in just like that. Now, I can't get it all the way around but I'm just gonna have to trust that it's sealed up on the other side. All right, so that looks good. When you're done using the tube, you wanna pull the handle back so it doesn't keep feeding out. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to stick my hand in here get it to where it needs to be now there's no flare on these guys or anything so it's just they're just flat there's no taper to them let's try to twist it in place <clears throat> wasn't for that recess I wouldn't be able to do that okay now I'm gonna spread the beat so the previous one lasted 30 years We'll see how long this lasts. All right. Now, also, I'm going to put the uh, the uh, the frames on them, the felt frames. But before I do, I'll probably do a little uh, test just to see how they work. It's it's obviously hard to demonstrate uh, what speakers are doing, especially when it's probably going to be completely distorted. But those things are hitting so hard, and way harder than they were without the foam on there. So I can tell you for sure. I mean, it's a dead giveaway. You got to do it. Uh, plus it controls the speaker. So you're not going to blow them. Uh, but man, crystal clear, these Vegas, man, they, they do some serious pounding, but anyways. Okay. Well, just wanted to give you guys a sample. I don't know. There's a lot of people out there that do these things, but they don't actually do samples on what they sound like afterward. So uh, that wanted to do that and yeah, all right.